So we are reading Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert K. Kiyosaki. We are on chapter lesson six, page number 176 of the book and page number 124 of the PDF. Job is an acronym for just over broke. Today, I still do business internationally. And as my rich dad encouraged me to do, I keep seeking the emerging nations. Today, my investment company invests in South American countries and Asian countries, as well as in Norway and Russia. There is an old cliche that goes, job is an acronym for just over broke. Unfortunately, I would say that applies to millions of people because school does not think financial intelligence is an intelligence. Most workers live within their means. They work and they pay the bills. There oh. is no... One second. Yeah, so what is he saying, right? People who have jobs, they are all waiting for their paycheck. They get their paycheck and they have already literally spent their money, right? That's what happens in Western countries. Before they get their paycheck, the bills have already been made and they just have to pay their bills with the money that they're get, getting. So they are not saving, right? That is the biggest issue. If you are living within your means, then you will be saving something. But here, living within the means means that if you are earning 100, you are spending 100. There is another horrible management theory that goes, workers work hard enough to not be fired and owners pay just enough so that workers won't quit. And if you look at the pay scales of most companies, again, I would say there is a degree of truth to that statement. So, so again, what is happening here, right? Everyone is looking for profit motive. So the companies want to pay just enough so that the workers stay and the workers work just hard enough so that they don't get fired, right? Of course, in India, it's a difficult job to fire anyone. But the fact is they will just do enough so that they don't get pulled up, right? No one works beyond what they can do. The work, the owners will not pay beyond what they can pay and the workers will not do go that extra mile. This is the biggest problem. Any person who's enterprising will always do more than what they are meant to do because it allows them to learn, right? So one of the lessons that he talked about over here was don't work to earn the salary, earn work to learn. So a person who works to learn will always go the extra mile, right? Beyond what he is meant to be doing. But most people will do how much they need to do and then that's it. In the net result is that most workers never get ahead. They do what they've been taught to do, get a secure job. Most workers focus on working for pay and benefits that reward them in the short term, but are often disastrous in the long term. Instead, I recommend to young people to seek work for what they will learn, more than what they will earn. Look down the road at what skills they want to acquire before choosing a specific profession and before getting trapped in the rat race. Once people are trapped in the lifelong process of paying bills, they become like little hamsters running around in those metal wheels. Their little furry legs are spinning furiously. The wheel is turning furiously. But come tomorrow morning, they'll still be in the same cage. Great job. So what, what is he saying? 
he's saying over here that once you get caught in the pattern then you'll keep running 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 and you'll remain in the pattern you're not going anywhere so the trick over here is to break the pattern to get out of the pattern to step out of the pattern this is something that we are talking about even when we are going into expanded states of consciousness when we are learning tools right what are we learning them for so that we can go beyond our belief systems we can start experiencing more we can start learning more so that we can get out of the patterns that really run our lives you know we think that we run our lives but it's actually patterns that are running our lives and till we become aware of the pattern and do not take steps to transcend the pattern they will keep running our lives so what the example is given here is like an hamster right they are running in that wheel which goes round and round they are constantly running and the wheel is going round and round and they are not going anywhere they are stuck in the same position and that's what happens to most of us in the movie cherry maguire starring tom cruise there are many great one liners probably the most memorable is show me the money but there is one line i most thought most truthful it comes from the scene where tom cruise is leaving the firm he has just been fired and he is asking the entire company who wants to come with me and the whole place is silent and frozen only one woman speaks up and says i'd like to but i'm due for a promotion in 3 months that statement is probably the most truthful statement in the whole movie it is the type of statement that people use to keep themselves busy working away to pay bills i know my educated dad looked forward to his pay raise every year and every year he was disappointed so he would go back to school to earn more qualifications so he could get another raise then once again there would be another disappointment so what is he saying over here right any person who's in a job whatever the raise they get it's not according to their expectation right they are looking for more why because they are working for the salary now if you were working for the knowledge if you were working to improve your competence then whatever the pay raise you got would not have been of any matter right now over here this expression i'd like to but i'm due for a promotion in 3 months now what is she stuck with if he walked away with jerry maguire she would have to start off right at the rock bottom but the potential was very high right but if she stayed in the firm maybe she was earning 100 she would start earning 110 or 120 right now she did not want to move because of that that 10 bucks or that 20 bucks raise that she was going to get so it is the mindset what is the mindset with which we are operating that becomes very very important the question i often ask people is where is the daily activity taking you just like the little hamster <clears throat> i wonder if people look at where their hard work is taking them what does the future hold so now this is a very very important passage right if you do not have a goal if you do not have a laksh right then you are like a bay penda ka lota or a boat which is rudderless you do not know where you are going so the point here becomes very clear that if any activity that you are do doing is not taking you towards your ultimate goal then it is not worth doing this is something that we need to realize and that's that's also the reason because people don't realize this they get stuck with doing things which they are not comfortable with which they are they really don't resonate with it is not their ikigai why because they need to earn their daily li livelihood from that they are not financially literate to be able to create a scenario where they can afford to do what they love to do what is their ikigai that's what we read in the ikigai book right the four tenets of ikigai what were they the first tenet was you must be good at doing what you are doing the world must need it it needs to be your passion and you can earn money or get something do be gainfully employed 
in whatever that thing is. If these four tenets are met, it becomes your ikigai. Now, many times you will find people cribbing that this is the worst job that I have. I don't feel like doing it. And they are still going like the hamster in that wheel, right? If you don't like something, then do something about it. Either train yourself to like it or step out of it. There's no point in getting stuck in a state where you don't like doing something, but you need to, you still need to do it. You're cutting your own feet. If you have to do something, you might as well like it and do it willfully and joyfully. And again, now if you come to the grid, anyone who's cribbing is on the left side of the grid. Anyone who's doing the work joyfully is on the right side of the grid. Now, manifestation can only take place from the right side of the grid. So whatever you are doing, it is better to do it from the right side of the grid than doing it at all from the left side of the grid. Right. So if you see in the previous paragraph, he said, my educated da dad was always looking for his pay rise. And every time that rise raise came, he was disappointed. So which side of the grid was he operating from? From the left side. So he was always operating in disappointment. In his book, The Retirement Myth, Craig S. Carpel writes, I visited the headquarters of a major national pension consulting firm and met with a managing director who specializes in designing lush retirement plans for top management. When I asked her what people who don't have corner offices will be able to expect in the way of pension income, she said with a confident smile, the silver bullet. What, I asked, is the silver bullet? She shrugged and said, if baby boomers discover they don't have enough money to live on when they're older, they can always blow their brains out. Karpil goes on to explain the difference between the old defined benefit retirement plans and the new 401k plans that are riskier. It is not a pretty picture for most people working today. And that is just for retirement. Add medical fees and long-term nursing home care. And the picture is frightening. Already many hospitals in countries with socialized medicine need to make tough decisions such as who will live and who will die. They make those decisions purely on how much money they have and how old the patients are. If the patient is old, they often will give the medical care to someone younger. The older, poor patient gets put to the back of the line. Just as the rich can afford better education, the rich will be able to keep themselves alive, while those who have little wealth will die. So, so again, this is the retirement plan thing they are talking about. In, in, in India, of course, you know, you have the provident fund which was there which most companies have to pro pay for that is 10 percent of the employee's salary is deducted from the salary payout and 10 percent is contributed by the employer and it is put into a provident fund any money in the provident fund uh, is non-attachable by any kind of case etc and also the interest earned on the provident fund is non-taxable Right. So when you get it back from the provident fund, you don't have to pay tax on it. That's the basic retirement benefit that is there across the board for most Indian people, provided they're working in the uh, in the corporate sector. Right. Some corporate corporates also have retirement plans in place. Now, in America, previously, there was a defined benefit retirement plan. So if you retired from a company, you got an X amount every month, depending on what your salary was. This was substituted by another process whereby you can, it works like the provident fund only, but in the provident, in the 401k accounts, you can actually deposit money and specify whether it will be put into debt instruments or into equity, right? Now the growth prospects, prospects in equity is higher than in debt funds but the risk is also higher. So that's why it becomes risky. You can draw on that money if you're buying a house or 
for some major medical expense. You cannot draw on that money for anything else. But having said that, most people today find that the amount that they are saving will not be enough for their retirement. So you actually have to start saving more to be able to take care of your retirement simply because of inflation. Also, the other reason is life expectancy. The life expectancy of people has also gone up. Previously, it was maybe uh, 50 years or 60 years. Now it has gone up to 70 years to 80 years in many cases. Now, of course, if you have the money, you are able to purchase the resources. You are able to purchase the care. You are able to purchase the medication. So the chances of surviving longer are definitely better for the richer than for the poorer people. So I wonder, are workers looking into the future or just until their next paycheck, never questioning where they are headed? When I speak to adults who want to earn more money, I always recommend the same thing. I suggest taking a long view of their life instead of simply working for the money and security, which I admit are important. I suggest they take a second job that will teach them a second skill. Often I recommend joining a network marketing company, also called multi-level marketing, if they want to learn sales skills. Some of these companies have excellent training programs that help people get over their fear of failure and rejection, which are the main reasons people are unsuccessful. Education is more valuable than money in the long run. So education is more valuable than money in the long run. Why? The reason is that money can go and come, but what you have learned will always remain with you. So again, when we re read Who Moved My Cheese, you have four characters over there, right? One guy just was in his box and he refused to move. The other guy realized there was something going wrong, but again, did not really take the action. The third guy used to jump into headlong into everything. So there was always a question mark. The fourth guy was always sniffing around and looking out whether another, another opportunity is there and then used to take an informed decision, right? Now, today you are in a job. Now, many of the jobs which were there, let us say 20 years back, are technically redundant today. A prime example would be when we look at the VCR, right? I remember when we were growing up, the VCR was like a cherished item. It was like a, a, a treasure. We used to really clean it and rub it and scrub it. And we used to watch a movie on a regular basis, right? Now, where are those VCRs gone? Now, suppose you had learned a skill to repair a VCR. Today, that skill is useless because there are no VCRs around. So you need, we need to constantly keep enhancing our skills. We need to keep enhancing the knowledge that we have depending on the circumstance. So if your passion can become your work, there is nothing like it. But you must always be looking out for a second or third line where which can, which can also be your ikigai and result in income generation in case your primary job goes out of sync. So what he's saying over here is I suggest they take a second job that will teach them a second skill. So it's always good to keep learning and growing because one of the jobs that you're doing or what you're doing may become redundant going forward. When I offer this suggestion, I often hear in response, oh, that is too much hassle, or I only want to do what I am interested in. If they say it's too much of a hassle, I ask, so you would rather work all your life giving 50% of what you earn to the government. If they tell me I only do what I'm interested in, I say, I'm not interested in going to the gym but I go because I want to feel better and live longer. Unfortunately, there is some truth to the old statement, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Unless a person is used to changing, it's hard to change. So this becomes important, right? Now, unless you're constantly learning, you're constantly growing, 
Like for example, we used to study in school, right? Now most people, if they are told to study for an exam, will lose their head. Why? Because they've they've forgotten how to study, right? They don't remember how to study anymore. So it's, it becomes difficult for them to do. Now, if you're not doing new things all the time, if you're if you land up in a situation where you have to do a new thing, it will become a huge challenge for you. And also, when you're looking at Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, etc., if a person is constantly doing something new, then the brain st cells get stimulated. So the advent of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, etc., get automatically depleted. Why? Because the brain is constantly getting stimulated. So it is very important to keep doing new things. I've mentioned this before. We ask this question in most of the workshop. When was the last time you did something new? This is something that we all need to introspect on. When did we learn something new? When did we taste something new? When did we read a new book? When did we do something new? This becomes important. And the more new things you do, the more you grow because that's information in your information bag. But for those of you who might be on the fence when it comes to the idea of working to learn something new, I offer this word of encouragement. Life is much like going to the gym. The most painful part is deciding to go. Once you get past that, it's easy. There have been many days I have dreaded going to the gym, but once I'm there and in motion, it is a pleasure. After the workout is over, I'm always glad I talked myself into going. So again, the first step is always the most difficult step. If you see the engine or if you see the, uh, yeah, if you see the train engine, when it is starting off, you know, there'll be, it'll start slipping until the grip comes and then the whole train starts to move. Once the train is moving, then effortlessly the train starts to move. So always taking the first step, making that first decision, making that first commitment and actually moving our butt, right? Taking action is where the problem actually lies. Once we've done that, we start to improve. If you're unwilling to work to learn something new and instead insist on becoming highly specialized within your field, make sure the company you work for is unionized. Labor unions are designed to protect specialists. So this again becomes important, right? The unions protect your job. Why? Because if you are specialized, you cannot multitask. You cannot be put into another place. So the labor unions ensure that you will get the job, which in the long run is not for the benefit of society, nor is it for the benefit of the company, nor is it for your own benefit, right? If you learn new things, then you can handle better. This is something that he said in the previous book, in, at the, in one of the previous chapters also, where he said that I'd rather have knowledge about a lot of things then knowledge about only one thing, because then you become narrow-minded. You cannot pull things from the other information. For example, whenever we are doing stuff, at least in awareness, you can see for yourself, we are always pulling stuff from all the stuff that we are doing and making it into a new package and then giving it. Because if we have more information, we can fine-tune using that extra information. But unions make you say that, no, you'll do this job and you will not do any other job. You will produce so much and you will not produce more than that. So what are the unions doing? They're actually restricting you. So they start off as looking as if they are benefiting you, but ultimately they are the ones who are chopping your legs off. And because you think that they will protect you, you subscribe to them, you follow them. Ultimately, it's always a downfall. My educator dad, after falling from grace with the governor, became the head of the teachers union in Hawaii. He told me that it was the hardest job he ever held. My rich dad, on the other hand, spent his life doing his best to keep his companies from becoming unionized. 
he was successful. Although the unions came close, rich dad was always able to fight them off. Personally, I take no sides because I can see the need for and the benefits of both sides. If you do, as school recommends, become highly specialized, then seek union protection. For example, had I continued with my flying career, I would have sought a company that had a strong pilot's union. Naranji, don't keep this on purse. Don't keep this on go ahead. Yeah, I'm just... Personally, I take no sides because I can see the need for and the benefits of both sides. If you do, as school recommends, become highly specialized, then seek union protection. For example, had I continued with my flying career, I would have sought a company that had a strong pilot's union. Why? Because my life would be dedicated to learning a skill that was valuable in only one industry. If I were pushed out of that industry, my life skills would not be as valuable to another industry. A displaced senior pilot with 100,000 hours of heavy airline transport time, earning $150,000 a year, would have a hard time finding an equivalent high paying job teaching in school. Skills do not necessarily transfer from industry to industry. Skills the pilots are paid for in the airline industry are not as important in, say, the school system. So, no. so again, the point is you're specialized in one kind of a job. If that industry collapses, then you have no job there. Like, for example, just now the airline industry in the COVID times took a big hit, right? Now the pilots, they can't just go and do something else. But if they knew something they could do, Right. There was a there was a talk about it. I think it came in this book only that these were the airline pilots. They didn't have a job. So they took up cooking. They became chefs. Why? Because they knew how to cook. Right. So they could take another job. Now, when the airline industry comes back, they can go back to the airline industry. Now, if they did not know how to cook, they would have been without a job. So that's why having multiple cap capabilities and capacities in the long term can be a helpful thing to have. The same is true even for doctors today. With all the changes in medicine, many medical specialists are needing to conform to medical organizations such as HMOs. School teachers definitely need to be union members. Today in America, the teachers union is the largest and the richest labor union of all. The NEA, the National Education Association, has tremendous political clout. Teachers need the protection of their union because their skills are also of limited value to an industry outside of education. So the rule of thumb is highly specialized, then unionize. It is the smart thing to do. So, uh, so again, right, if you are highly specialized, you need to get unionized. If you're not highly specialized, then you don't need to be Unionize. Shimangla, slow down a bit. When I ask the class I teach, how many of you can cook a better hamburger than McDonald's? Almost all the students raise their hands. I then ask, so if most of you can cook a better hamburger, how come McDonald's makes more money than you? The answer is obvious. McDonald's is excellent at business systems. The reason so many talented people are poor is because they focus on building a better hamburger and know little to nothing about business systems. So what does it mean? Right. Anything to work has a lot of components. Like today, if a housewife is running a house, she knows how she'll have to know how to purchase what is required for the house. She'll know how to do what with it. She'll know how to clean. 
she'll know how to wash she know how to uh, uh, you know manage the staff so a lot of components go into managing a house right now if if the lady of the house says i will only cook and do nothing else the house will collapse right so in the same way whenever you are doing a business also there are various aspects to a business which is which creates a system so the ideal thing that we need to have is that the system should run the person should not run so if i have a system which runs over here he is talking about the business system so mcdonalds has created a system which runs and people get slotted in where they need to get slotted in right so the one person is not running everything there are a lot of components to a business which makes the business run a friend of mine in hawaii is a great artist he makes a sizable amount of money one day his mother's attorney called to tell him that she had left him 35000 dollars that is what was left of her estate after the attorney and the government took their shares immediately he saw an opportunity to increase his business by using some of this money to advertise two months later his first four color full page ad appeared in an expensive magazine that targeted the very rich the ad ran for 3 months he received no replies from the ad and all of his inheritance is now gone he now wants to sue the magazine for misrepresentation so what happened he got some money instead of investing it properly he simply blew it away thinking that it will give him results so there was not a proper strategy involved into what he was investing in this is a common case of someone who can build a beautiful hamburger but knows little about business when i asked him what he learned his only reply was advertising sales people are crooks i then asked him if he would be willing to take a course in sales and a course in direct marketing his reply i don't have the time and i don't want to waste my money so he is willing to spend 35000 dollars in taking out ads but he is not willing to learn and put in the time and effort to understand where he should advertise how should he advertise and what is the game that needs to be played when you are wanting to make sales right if he is not willing to do that then how can he expect his sales to grow the world is filled with talented poor people all too often they are poor or struggle financially or earn less than they are capable of not because of what they know but because of what they do not know they focus on perfecting their skills at building a better hamburger rather than the skills of selling and delivering the hamburger maybe mcdonalds does not make the best hamburger but they are the best at selling and delivering a basic average burger so you may have the best of something but if you can't sell it right you can't show it to people then there's no point in really having it that's what happens to so many artists right they create fabulous work but they don't have the marketing they they don't know how to sell their product or they undersell their product they they don't have a concept of pricing what is the pulse of the market where are they going they don't have that pulse so naturally they don't become successful poor dad wanted me to specialize that was his view on how to be paid more even after being told by the governor of hawaii that he could no longer work in state government my educated dad continued to encourage me to get specialized educated dad then took up the cause of the teachers union campaigning for further protection and benefits for these highly skilled and educated professionals we argued often but i now i know he never agreed that over specialization is what caused the need for union protection he never understood that the more specialized you become the more you are trapped and dependent on that speciality so 
absolutely right right now i am a specialized heart surgeon now suppose no one has any heart problems anymore then where is my specialization skill going to take me nowhere right so it's very important to have a multifarious kind of skill rather than being just specialized in only one thing rich dad advised that mike and i groom ourselves many corporations do the same thing they find a young bright student just out of business school and begin grooming that person to some day take over the company so these bright young employees do not specialize in one department they are moved from department to department to learn all the aspects of business systems the rich often groom their children or the children of others by doing so their children gain an overall knowledge of the operations of the business and how the various departments interrelate so <clears throat> this is happening in most business families who are truly wanting their children to get educated about the firms that they are running right the the children will be sent to all the departments one at a time star performers no a little and no efficiently about all aspects of a organization only then they can run the whole organization that is why you will find that there is a sales person who's very very good at sales in an organization he is the head of sales he is performing very well and then he is elevated to a position of let's say the managing director right he is eligible there he is most competently viewed but he has no idea about production he has no idea about finance he has no idea about marketing he only knows sales he has no idea about uh, 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 hr right he is not going to be successful whereas a person who has been in all the departments knows all knows aspects of every part of the company will always be a more successful managing director than a person who specialized in only one skill so many uh, as mentioned over here many of these companies they actually pick up these bright guys and they shift them from department to department so that they get an information and a feel of all the departments of the company so they can be groomed for higher management status for the world war 2 generation it was considered bad to skip from company to company today it is considered smart since people will skip from company to company rather than seek greater specialization in skills why not seek to learn more than to earn in the short term it may earn you less but it will pay dividends in the long term the main management skills needed for success are management of cash flow to management of systems three management of people the most specialized skills are sales and marketing the ability to sell to communicate to another human being be it a customer employee boss spouse or child is the base skill of personal success communication skills such as writing speaking and negotiating are crucial to a life of success these are skills i work on constantly attending courses or buying educational resources to expand my knowledge so again five m's are there right money manpower material machine and uh, market when you have all five you become successful so over here he is written six, uh, three of them he is saying management of cash which is money management of systems which would include machine ma manpower uh, uh, machine and uh, material right and then he says management of people also so you need to have all these abilities to be able to manage something properly
As I have mentioned, my educator dad worked harder and harder. The more competent he became, he also became more trapped. The more specialized he got, although his salary went up, his choices diminished. Soon after he was locked out of government work, he found out how vulnerable he really was professionally. It is like professional athletes who suddenly are injured or are too old to play. Their once high-paying position is gone, and they have limited skills to fall back on. I think that is why my educator dad sided so much with the unions after that. He realized how much a union would have benefited him. So, so again the same. So again the same thing over here, right? The moment you become extra specialized. you get stuck like many times when people get out of a job they will find that when they go for employment to companies they will say that you are over qualified for this job we cannot hire you right so you have to have multifarious skills yes renu ji uh bhaiya which was the fifth you had said money there are five um, money yeah um man man money man yeah. machine material yeah. and uh, uh, i think it's management yeah management these are the five things which actually make okay. a factory run yeah yeah i didn't get the management actually yeah Rich dad encouraged Mike and me to know a little about a lot. He encouraged us to work with people smarter than we were and to bring smart people together to work as a team. Today, it would be called a synergy of professional specialities. So, what did he say? You know a little about everything, so you can bring a group together and make them work together because you know a little about everything that everyone is doing. so you know who is good at what and what will work and what will not work getting them to work together so that you achieve your end right so you are hiring people who know more than you in a particular subject but you actually know more than them when you collectively look at all your information and your knowledge so that is why you can manage them you can talk to them you have the jargon you have the language to be able to speak to them it doesn't mean that you are better than them they may be better than you but you have the communication skills to communicate with them and you can put two of these two together to achieve a greater end today i meet ex school teachers earning hundreds of thousands of dollars a year they earn that much because they have specialized skills in their field as well as other skills they can teach as well as sell and market i know of no other skills to be more important than selling and marketing the skills of selling and marketing are difficult for most people primarily due to their fear of rejection so the better you are at communicating negotiating and handling your fear of rejection the easier life is just as i advise that newspaper writer who wanted to become a best selling author i advise anyone else today being technically specialized has its strengths as well as its weaknesses i have friends who are geniuses but they cannot communicate effectively with other human beings and as a result their earnings are pitiful i advise them to just spend a year learning to sell even if they earn nothing the communication skills will improve and that is priceless so the ability to communicate your idea the ability to actually let another person know being able to listen to be able to understand is extremely important there are such highly talented people who get stuck in a lab doing nothing their ideas are taken and marketed by someone else and they make a packet and the person who invented it gets nothing in return right 
because they didn't know how to sell it's all about packaging today whoever has the market is literally the king who can sell is the king at one time it was who could produce because there was a shortage of production capacity now enough capacities are there but the marketing and the money is where the game is now being played in addition to being good learners sellers and marketers we need to be good teachers as well as good students to be truly rich we need to be able to give as well as to receive in cases of financial or professional struggle there is often a lack of giving and receiving i know many people who are poor because they are neither good students nor good teachers so we come back to celestine prophecy when will growth take place when we are not playing a control drama right we are willing to give and we are willing to receive and that's how growth takes place we are willing to support each other we are willing to help each other out that is how growth will take place right there was a whatsapp message which came recently it's been circulating now there's this person who's playing a violin and he's playing a violin and people come and give him tips and around that place where he is playing the violin there are various other shops there are various other uh, people there someone is selling tea someone is selling something else now what happens is that a, 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 a someone loses control of his motorcycle and he actually breaks the violin of this person now naturally he cannot buy another violin because he doesn't have the resources he doesn't have the money but the other shop owners they all come and chip in maybe 50 rupees or 60 rupees each or whatever and giving him the ability to buy the violin again why because they were getting benefited when people were going with the violin music they were their business was also getting affected and naturally when people came to their shops they were listening to the violin and violin player and also gave him a tip so they were working with each other right now if we can all start supporting each other helping each other out then the concept of you know one upmanship the power dramas the dramas that the control dramas will all go out of the window and life will actually become beautiful so we need to be good teachers and we need to be good learners all the time we must constantly be learning anyone who says i've learned everything has cut their own feet they're finished right so that growth must always be there both of my dads were generous men both made it a practice to give first teaching was one of their ways of giving the more they gave the more they received one glaring difference was in the giving of money my rich dad gave lots of money away he gave to his church to charities and to his foundation he knew that to receive money you had to give money giving money is the secret to most great wealthy families that is why there are organizations like the rockefeller foundation and the ford foundation these are organizations designed to take their wealth and increase it as well as give it away in perpetuity my educated dad always said when i have some extra money i'll give it the problem was that there was never any extra so he worked harder to draw more money in rather than focus on the most important law of money give and you shall receive instead he believed in receive and then you give in conclusion i became both dads one part of me is a hardcore capitalist who loves the game of money making money the other part is a socially responsible teacher who is deeply concerned with this ever widening gap between the haves and have nots i personally hold the archaic educational system primarily responsible for this growing gap so the more you give the more you get because the universe works in that way right the more you give the more you will receive and give willingly give freely that becomes very very important
okay there's there's a new chapter coming up now chapter 7 chapter 8 you want to stop here you want to continue chalo let's continue let's go on hmm chapter 7 overcoming obstacles the primary difference between a rich person and a poor person is how they manage fear once people have studied and become financially literate they may still face roadblocks to becoming financially independent there are five main reasons why financially literate people may still not develop abundant asset columns that could produce a large cash flow the five reasons are fear number 2 cynicism 3 laziness 4 bad habits 5 arrogance so all these habits if you look at them fear cynicism laziness bad habits and arrogance will automatically put you into the left side of the grid so if you are operating from the left side of the grid you can never become financially independent overcoming fear i have never met anyone who really likes losing money and in all my years i have never met a rich person who has never lost money but i have met a lot of poor people who have never lost a dime investing that is so again if you have a fear if you have a fear of losing money then you can never make money right and most people if any person you ask they've always lost money somewhere or the other we need to transcend the fear of losing money the fear of losing money is real everyone has it even the rich but it's not having fear that is the problem it's how you handle fear it's how you handle losing it's how you handle failure and makes the difference in one's life the primary difference between a rich person and a poor person is how they manage that fear so now if a person has never failed in their life when a, when they suddenly fail they will have no means they will have no competence to be able to handle that fear that is why whenever i go to any in, uh, to all my clients and they are going through a bad patch i always tell them it's a very good thing that has happened to you because you it is controlled it is still manageable right you learn skills as to how you can manage in an adverse situation now if a big adverse situation comes they have developed the resilience they have developed the capacity to be able to handle that situation it's very much like you know these vaccines what is the basis behind the vaccine that you take a small dose of that particular thing your body can manage it it develops antibodies to be able to take care of that particular disease and then it gets handled that's the basis of vaccine so in the same way if you've never failed in life and this is a big problem that our generation has created for our children is that we have not allowed them to see failure we have been so protective of them that we have not allowed them to see failure they have not learned how to fail so when life hits them on the face and they start failing they have a huge problem to contend with because they are not geared up to actually fa face the failure it's okay to be fearful it's okay to be a coward when it comes to money you can still be rich we are all heroes at something and cowards at something else my friend's wife is an emergency room nurse when she sees blood she flies into action when i mention investing she runs away when i see blood i don't run i pass out so again everyone has their skills right you have to be important and you have to work on your skills develop them but also develop other skills
My rich dad understood phobias about money. Some people are terrified of snakes. Some people are terrified about losing money. Both are phobias, he would say. So his solution to the phobia of losing money was this little rhyme. If you hate risk and worry, start early. Okay, so the more you do something, the more used to it you become, the more you can handle it better. A simple example for this would be that you live near a factory or you live near a railway, railway line or you live near an airport, right? After some time, the airplanes taking off or the, rail tra the trains going on the track or the noise from the factory will get tuned out. You'll get so used to it that it is not a pain anymore. So what he's saying over here, if you, are, if you have a phobia about investing in money or losing money, if you would have started earlier, early in the game, early in your life doing it, then you would not have that phobia anymore. That's why it's very, very important to start children to learn how to save money, to keep accounts, hisab rakhna, you know, hisab rakhna is a very, very important thing that they know where they are spending, how are they spending, what are they receiving and how, what are they spending it on, what is their saving. What are they doing with the saving starts becoming extremely important, right? So a person can start young. They don't have to start when they are old, but the idea is inculcated when they are young, right? So play games with your children, make them understand the value of money. When they are doing something, they get something in return, right? So how do they do that? You need to teach them. We need to all teach our children, not just hand over money to them, and okay, go play, enjoy and be happy. It's very, very important to train them in the process of money management when they are young. If you start young, it's easier to be rich. I won't go into it here, but there is a staggering difference between a person who starts investing at age 20 versus age 30. The purchase of Manhattan Island is said to be one of the greatest bargains of all time. New York was purchased for $24 in trinkets and beads. Yet, if that $24 had been invested at 8% annually, that $24 would have been worth more than $28 trillion by 1995. Manhattan could be repurchased with money left over to buy much of Los Angeles. But what if you don't have much time left or would like to retire early? How do you handle the fear of losing money? My poor dad did nothing. He simply avoided the issue, refusing to discuss the subject. My rich dad, on the other hand, recommended that I think like a Texan. I like Texas and Texans, he used to say. In Texas, everything is bigger. When Texans win, they win big. And when they lose, it's spectacular. They like losing, I asked. That's not what I'm saying. Nobody likes losing. Show me a happy loser and I'll show you a loser, said Rich Dad. It's a Texan's attitude towards risk, reward and failure I'm talking about. It's how they handle life. They live it big, not like most of the people around here, living like roaches when it comes to money, terrified that someone will shine a light on them and whimpering when the grocery clerk short changes them a quarter. Rich Dad went on, what I like best is the Texas attitude. They're proud when they win and they brag when they lose. Texans have a saying, if you're going to go broke, Go big. You don't want to admit you went broke over a duple. He constantly told Mike and me that the greatest reason for lack of financial success was because most people played it too safe. People are so afraid of losing that they lose, were his words. I think we can stop 